Hello, in this video I will show you how to make an ozone generator and I will also talk about some physics involved. I made few types. So this first one is the condenser stuffed with copper wire and filled with conductive liquid. To the conductive liquid uh, there's one electrode connected and one electrode is connected to the stuffed copper wire. The idea idea here is that you can see the discharge so it's a rather rather a cosmetic design than uh, functional also you could uh, easily connect a tube to the condenser but the problem is that it didn't work so I thought that problem was uh, with liquid electrodes so I made this one which has uh, similar glass thickness just for a test and it did not work so then I made this one the inner electrode is uh, more forced to the side of the glass also glass is thinner and there's more wire wound around so I thought that may be an issue there are two ways to test if uh, this device work. Uh, first one is you smell the ozone actually it smelled pretty easily just a few seconds after powering and second one is you can see the discharge as a faint glow but there's nothing on those three types I made. Uh, you can now see that glass thickness compared one to each other. The right side one is about two millimeter thick and the longer one is about half a millimeter thick. After this long chain of unsuccess I made this one. This is made of plastic also. Inner electrode is aluminium foil stuffed in between the walls of the rolled plastic sheet so it is perfectly forced to the sides. Copper wire around is just as it is, there is nothing to do very much about it and it didn't work as well. So I made also this one, there is uh, dielectric material, this is PVC, also stuff with copper wire inside and no change, not working at all. So I made this one and this one is actually the first one I made and it works pretty well the only difference between those are diameter of the inner electrode uh, this one is pretty thin about I don't know half a millimeter then there is dielectric material and wire wrapped around so I made this one to just to confirm that I'm not doing anything wrong and this one didn't work so so when you compare those two there's not really any difference yeah the longer one is wrapped around some wooden piece but it really works also in straight state any length so I don't know really or at least I didn't really know what was happening this one is a variation on that uh, on the generator on the wood chunk so it works really nice and yeah I will show you some photos of this they are pretty interesting this is shorter time exposure photo you can see that the glow it is not very consistent I don't really know if this is right or not but I guess no here you can see there's actually little tiny places where, where the discharge is happening and spreading on dielectric material which is kinda what I would expect but okay but uh, long story short before we start with physics I what I have found is that I was using DC power source it was flyback from TV and those modern flybacks has internal diodes so but the problem is that how the fuck can can any of those work and there is that one particular type that is working and I don't really know how so I read something on the wiki and I came to some conclusion okay so let's let's see what's going on here 
Okay, so we have two sharp electrodes and at the higher voltages those sharp points have a really, really high electric field that may be visualized by, by those red, red lines that represents electric field. So there is ionization of air molecules going on and the current discharge happens. When we, when we modify one electrode and make it not so sharp, the current discharge on one side is eliminated. And that is because the electric force density is slower because it's more spread. Well, uh, also this all happens in uh, ambient air actually. And here I am writing uh, electrical breakdown voltage for air that corresponds to about one kilovolt per uh, per millimeter. The distance between those electrodes must be greater than 20 millimeters at 20 kilovolts. Okay man enough of that bullshit. I apologize to you for my coke for that crappy narration. We don't want to spend next 10 hours on editing audio. But back to the subject. Let's simplify those electrodes by replacing rods for circular shape. Reconnect them and visualizing electric field lines we can see, that nothing much will change. The reason why we got rid of corona discharge on positive side is, that it is not producing much ozone. The negative side and positive side corona have different properties because of different charge and free electron density. However, those two circles will not create very much ozone. We can either have arrays of electrodes or in our case we can add one dimension to drawing. Now on thin electrode there will be corona formed on whole length. Note that this thin electrode should have about 0.3 mm diameter and electric field will produce force, which can cause vibrations, even bending at large lengths. As those electrodes should be as close as possible there is big risk of arc forming. We can add some spacers to prevent this, but this is only adding complexity to the system. We can use dielectric material as current limiting element. Note, that we changed power supply from DC to AC. This is because as the insulator is saturated by charged particles, we have to change polarity to let the current flow back. Next benefit is, that we can move electrodes almost infinitely close together. As long as there is gas to ionize, the system will work. So this is pretty robust solution. By combination of previous two systems we can use insulated wire as one electrode, wrap then wire around which is second electrode. Now everybody should agree that this is effectively a capacitor. To reveal mystery, why there was such inconsistency in our experiments, let's draw a schematic of this device. First of all our experiment was done on DC supply, but here is drawing of AC supply with a capacitor connected to it directly. As you may know this circuit has its DC equivalent, at fixed frequency a capacitor may be replaced with resistor so current flowing will be the same. Oops editing glitch. So most likely this is what's happened. When we go a little bit more into detail, on this picture is drawing of that resistive equivalent. Note that thin wire has also a very good coating that can withstand 20 kV, but it is prone to cracking and mechanical damage. So I think, that on those damaged parts of wire a discharge will be formed, represented by green in this drawing. Compared to the real photo I think that this is real thing. Also a wire that was used here is from water pump, that was extremely cheap, cable quality was 2 of 10, it was exposed to weather for a long time so no wonder that it is behaving in such way, bad thing is, that flyback supply was destroyed during diode amputation. Good thing is, that I have learned something new and bought a plasma ball so I can try use that as power source. I am also not going to do ozonolysis until I have enough knowledge to do it safe. There may be an update to this. I pretty much want to see the condenser generator in action.